Hello everyone, I'm Dan and I've just moved back to London and I'm still setting everything up so apologies if everything sounds a little bit wonky, I'm still working on it. But today I want to show you an interesting little prototype that I've been playing around with for months now. I really haven't quite known the best way of implementing this and I'm still not 100% surefire of the way that I've done it. Uh, but today I want to showcase procedural generated models. And so this is what I call live models. They're essentially, they're models whose geometry is generated by Lua scripts in the editor. Now, you might be wondering, okay, that's fantastic, but what does all of that mean? So first things first, why do we even want to be generating models in the first place? So it's no secret that I've been looking for ways to optimize the creation process for creating levels in Roblox Studio. And one thing that I've realized is that we think about levels differently to how we build them. Suppose, for example, we want to make a pipe that runs along a wall. We don't want to, you know, consider every single cylinder and mesh in that pipe when we're thinking about designing the level. We just think, oh, there'll be a pipe running along the wall. But when it comes to building, we end up, you know, assembling meshes in order to make that pipe come into existence. And we do it all manually. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just place down a pipe and just like drag it out to the correct size and just have all of that detailed geometry just generated for you by a script? Well, that's basically what this live model prototype does. So a live model is basically just a model that is defined by some configuration, defined by some like attributes. But the geometry is then generated from that by a fully fledged Lua script within your editor. So to start off with, over here in Replicator Storage, I have this model called Trees. And if I look over here on the properties panel, we see we have a couple of attributes. So we have seed 81165, whatever that means, uh, regenerate seed, live model class, whatever. So that's all state. Then we have this editor configuration and in here we have an origin part and this part as you can see here has a position and uh, there's nothing else right there's no tree model here this is all just data what i'm now going to do is i'm going to drag this trees model here into the workspace where did that come from right so as you just saw we just had a pile of data essentially we just had a seed, we had like an origin, all that sort of stuff. But suddenly now there's a tree here and we can rotate it and do whatever we want with it. And yeah, we can duplicate it because that's just duplicating the data like that. And all this geometry here, this tree geometry has been generated from the data. Uh, we can generate a new tree, by the way, by going up here to insert live model. We can click on trees again and we get another tree. If we do this a few times, you'll see a few variants pop up. So there we go. There's like a sort of yellowy variant. That one's a bit darker and that one's very dark. And if we actually look at it from up above, you'll notice that the rotation of the trees is also randomized. Uh, the reason why is because we've given these trees different seed values, right? So these trees all have the same seed, so they look the same but this one has a different seed. And so this feeds into a random number generator in the script, which randomizes different attributes of the tree. That's pretty interesting. So I added another feature into the scripts that powers this called regenerate seed. And this is basically just for demonstration purposes. Uh, if I turn this on now, whenever I create a new instance of the tree, it will regenerate the seed, which means that every single time I duplicate, uh, these models, I'm getting a new set of tree parameters, a new rotation, a new color, that sort of thing. And so you can see very quickly, I now have a very diverse range of trees just because I've been you know, manipulating that data. So that's really neat. Um, what I'm going to do, let's turn off regenerate seed now. So we've turned it off and now it will no longer do that. So it's just copying the data straight up. It's not regenerating the seed every single time we make a copy. So that's all really neat and all well and good. But what about if we wanted to do something a little bit more dynamic? Like, I don't know, we wanted to create an array modifier, something that will like 
repeat something, maybe with variations over a certain volume or something. Well, I've got an example of that as well. I called it box here. And uh, as you can see here, at, at the very beginning, it just looks like a box. But again, as I said before, this is just pure data. Uh, we are actually resizing the boundaries that it is filling. The actual geometry inside of this box is being generated by a script. What this means is that when I resize the box, we can do interesting stuff with it. So as you can see here, as I resize the box, we are getting new geometry and we can sort of resize it down. We can resize it up, all that good stuff. We can do all of that. And it's all procedurally generated. And of course, uh, we can play this game now and we'll see what happens. Uh, so it's important to note that it sort of like dissolves away all of the uh, like editor stuff when you play the game. So if I like take, what tree is this? It's this tree here. If I were to, uh, you know, move this around now, so if I moved it into like replicated first, it keeps the generated geometry. It only runs in the editor. Uh, so that's like a nice little convenience thing. So it doesn't mess with all your scripts. And yeah, so that's basically that part of the demo. So I've shown you sort of like how all this procedural stuff works in sort of like the editor. But like, how does it work in Lua? Like, what am I actually doing here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a live model definition. So a definition is basically it's a script that uh, responds to the presence of live models. So uh, it might be a script that generates all the trees or a script that generates those blocks. We're just gonna go with a minimal setup here. So you can see here in server storage, I have my live model scripts. So these are all my definitions. And we have this new empty minimal one. If we take a look under the hood, this is the script that's generating everything. So the only two methods that are actually strictly necessary here are loaded and unloaded. Loaded is called when a live model enters the workspace. Unloaded is called when it leaves the workspace. And here what we just do is we try and find an existing configuration, some existing state. If it doesn't exist, then we'll create it and we'll do like a first time load here. So this sort of like, this is what's used to sort of place like your thing in the world when you first insert it because of course, when you first insert a live model, it's just an empty model. So this is where we do all that logic and then generate here. So this is called to generate the actual geometry. And so you can see here, we sort of say generated is a new folder, call it generated. It's not archivable because it's not real. Uh, we parent it to the model and then we generate our geometry like that. And then we just clean it up at the end. And uh, so that's basically all that fundamentally goes on with this, right? It's just calling this script whenever our live model gets entered into the workspace so that we can generate our geometry, set up our state, whatever we need to do, and it all gets destroyed when we're done. Uh, so let's look at a little bit more of an involved example. Now let's take a look at how these trees work here. So you'll notice uh, first thing first on this sort of trees uh, definition, we have this thing called auto rotate, this attribute here. As you see, we turn it on and off, and that changes whether the trees are auto-rotated or not. So it's a nice sort of global thing. And we have some variants underneath it, and those are the variants of the trees that we're seeing here with all different colors. Uh, but if we, if we actually take a look under the hood here, we can see much of the same thing. So we see we have almost the same loaded and unloaded. It's slightly different because I wrote it at a different time. Um, but basically doing the same thing. Uh, here in our generate function, so you can sort of see if we've set regenerate seed, then it will reset the seed to something random. Um, and then it creates a random number generator. It figures out where the origin is, right? So if we take, take a look in our tree here, what it's finding there is it's finding inside of editor configuration, it's finding origin, which is this part here, which determines the origin point of the tree. Then it chooses a random variant and clones it. And that variant then gets sort of positioned to where the origin point is. If we've turned on auto rotate, then it will multiply it by a random angle. 
Uh, so we just we move it to that uh, origin scene frame, and then we remove it. Like we we move it again whenever the origin C frame changes or whenever auto rotate gets turned on or off. And then we just we just parent that to uh, the generated folder. And so that's how the actual geometry of the tree gets generated. Pretty simple. Uh, it's just basically cloning and repositioning model into place. The actual first time setup here. Uh, so you can see at first it sets like a seed attribute and this uh, determines a seed for the random number generator. We just do this to make sure that we can have a consistent seed if we need it. Add, we add the regenerate seed attribute. Uh, this is interesting. We actually raycast from the camera to determine where to place the tree initially like this. And then we place our origin point here and we place it using that sort of raycast. Uh, we parent it to the configuration thing. We set the primary part of the model to that origin. So whenever you're dragging it around and stuff, it's all being done relative to that origin part. And then we set the selection to the model. That's not something that uh, live models does for you automatically. It's something that you can do, which means that you have total control over how this works. And yeah, that's basically the entire tree example. I mean, we just have this choose variant thing, which just randomly chooses a model with like weights and stuff. So it's just randomly choosing a thing. And of course, we can take a look at uh, this procedural generation thing here, these boxes. This one's a little bit more involved, uh, be mainly just because of like some logical challenges. Um, so of course, we have the same choose variant here. On the first time load, we're basically doing the same thing, except instead of an origin part, it's an extents part, as you can see here. So we just have our extents here. So it actually has size, is basically the main point. Um, you'll notice here we're using this tile size attribute. This is actually something we've defined on the live model. So we could change this to 666, like that. And you can see now that we've changed the tile size, it sort of spaces it out a little bit more. Uh, we could actually set this to like 606, and that'll stop it from tiling at all on the Y axis. So it's two dimensional, basically. Which is something I neglected to mention before. And of course, we could set it to something wacky like, I don't know, one, two, three. And of course, this is just a big mess. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do four, five, six, just to space it out a little bit more. And you can see on this axis, they're all packed together. It's a little bit spaced out on the Y axis. And on the Z axis, it's very spaced out. So it's basically just changing how regularly the tiling happens. So we'll set it to six, six, six again. Uh, you'll notice it's obviously like centering it within the extents as well. Um, anyway, back to the code. Um, all we're doing here was just creating an extent. We set it to tile a couple of times by default, and then we're just doing the same thing as we did before. Uh, generate, we have the same thing with regenerate seed. We get the extents here. And then this update model bit here is a little bit more complicated. Basically, we calculate, using the tile size, we calculate how many instances in each dimension we need. If that's changed, then we sort of regenerate a bunch of models uh, using our variant here. We set an attribute on it to register whereabouts in the model it is, based on its like XYZ ind indexes. And then down here, what we're doing is basically just going through all of the models and we're repositioning them based on the new position and size of the extents. And we do this every time, not just when the count changes, because sometimes you can change the size of a part like this without actually changing how many instances there are. Because obviously you could change how many instances there are, but sometimes we just need to like recenter it or something. So that's neat. Um, we just update that whenever the C frame or the size changes of the extents. We change that whenever the tile size changes, you know, that sort of thing. And that's really basically it, apart from this little thing down here, just for convenience. If we select the model, then we automatically uh, move it down to select the extent instead of the entire model, which basically means that I can just click on it. It will automatically select the part instead of the model, and then I can immediately resize it. Uh, but I might change how that works because it sort of does lead to a few very interesting problems. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically 
most of everything. Uh, one thing I did sort of neglect to mention is that uh, if you, for example, make a change to your live model. So, for example, let's say I got rid of three variants of box. Obviously, we need this model to update, but this model does not, uh, it did not detect that change. It wasn't programmed to detect it. So I just have a refresh button here that will automatically uh, reconstruct all of your live models to update them, keep them nice and up to date, just in case anything goes wrong. Uh, but other than that, this is basically just my quick little demo of what procedural modeling in Roblox Studio could look like. It's it's interesting. I'm, I, I'm not sure whether this is the correct way to go about doing it, but it's certainly one of the most flexible ways of doing it. And I think I'm going to be exploring this space a lot more, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't before I turn this into a plugin. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed that. I've been Dan, and I will see you guys next time. Have fun.